All right, guys, here we go, section uh, 7.3. So in the past, we've proven triangles are congruent using angle, angle, side, 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 and side, angle, side. Um, now we're gonna talk about ways to prove that triangles are similar. So how do I show you, given some information, that two triangles are the same size, but a or same shape, but a different size, okay? Um, Here's one theorem that will help us, and this is probably the easiest one. It's called the angle-angle similarity theorem. And so if I can show you that two angles of one triangle are congruent to two corresponding angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar, meaning the rest of it falls into place. All of the angles are congruent, all the corresponding sides are proportional. Be careful though, this only works for triangles. You don't have an angle-angle pentagon theorem. It only works for triangles. So uh, we're going to be focusing primarily on triangles today. Um, so, determine whether the triangles are similar. If so, write a similarity statement. So I need to determine if I can show that two angles of one triangle are congruent to two of another. Clearly these 42 degree angles are the same, but I don't know anything about, you know, the 58 and the 80 aren't congruent, but I don't know anything about the third angles. Well, recall that the three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180, so I can find those third angles, and I can determine if they really are congruent, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, and it turns out that the third angle in the first triangle is 80, and we had an 80 degree angle in the other triangle as well. So we did have two angles congruent to two angles, okay? Um, how about here? All I'm given is parallel lines. Well, jump back to chapter three. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, that means our alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle Q is congruent to angle N, angle M is congruent to angle P, and then we have the angle-angle similarity theorem. Two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, so that makes these two triangles similar. Okay, so pause the video, take a look at this on your own, and see if you can determine if these are similar or not, and then write the similarity statement. All right, again, clearly these 42 degree angles are the same. I don't know about any others, so we have a little bit of work to do. If I add these two up, I have 94 degrees, so if I subtract uh, 94 from 180, I'm left with 86 degrees for that missing angle. And I can see that there's an 86 degree angle in the other triangle, so now I do have angle angle, okay? And so, yes, clearly, but then I need to write my, core, or my congruence statement. So if I'm gonna say triangle ABC, that's 86 degrees, 42 degrees, 52 degrees. So if I want the order to be, be the same in the other one, that's G and then F and then H. And so B is the correct one, so that I get my corresponding angles to match up, okay? Another diagram. Determine whether the triangles are similar, and if so, write a similarity statement. Well, we had talked about this one. The fact that these lines are parallel means that the alternate interior angles are congruent. And for that matter, the vertical angles are congruent too. So not only do I have two congruent angles, I have three. Um, now I need to write the, the correct uh, similarity statement. So if I'm going to say WVZ, W is congruent to Y, V is congruent to V, and Z is congruent to X. So it's going to be YVX, okay? And that would be A. So make sure that you're detail-oriented when you write that out as well, okay? A couple other theorems. Side, side, side similarity. So if I can show you that three sides of one triangle are proportional to three sides of another. In other words, JK over MP is the same ratio as KL over PQ, which is the same ratio as LJ over QM, then by side, side, side similarity, I can say that the triangles are similar. Or side, angle, side similarity. If I can show you that two sets of sides, corresponding sides are similar, so same ratio, and the angle that includes them is congruent, then the triangles are similar by side angle side similarity. So let's look at an example of that. So determine whether the triangles are similar. Well, they've given me all the sides, so I could check the corresponding sides, just the ratios, are they the same or not? Um, or I could use side angle side because I know that these vertical angles are congruent, and then I just need to test a couple of sides. So let's see what we've got here. So AB over DE, comparing the left sides, is nine over six or three halves. Uh, AC over DC is six over four, which is three halves. 
And then the remaining sides, the BC over CE is 7.5 over 5, which is also 3 halves. Since all of the corresponding sides have the same ratio, we can say these triangles are similar by side, side, side similarity. Okay? Um, similar question, determine whether the triangles are similar. Now the triangles are the small one on top, MNP, and then the bigger one, MRS. What you have to keep in mind here, you guys, is that both of those triangles share that angle. So I've got an included angle that I'm going to uh, be able to use already. Okay, what I need to then test is the, the corresponding side. So 10, which is the left side of the small triangle, would compare to 25, which is the left side of the big triangle. So be careful. Students sometimes want to go 10 over 15, but it's 10 over 25. And on this side, it's going to be 12 over 30. And I'm just trying to determine if those are the same. So 12 over 30 is 2 fifths. 10 over 25 is 2 fifths. That ratio is the same. So I've got two sets of sides that have the same ratio. I've got the included angles congruent. So by side angle side similarity, these triangles are similar. Okay. So pause your video. Uh, see if you can determine if these are similar or not and by which they are. Okay. So what I've been given is two sets of sides. So I'm probably not going to be able to use side, side, side here. Um, I do have, by the vertical angles theorem, the included angles congruent. So then I just need to test some corresponding sides. So this 2 compared to the 6. 2 corresponds to the 6. That would be 1 third. 4 cor compared to the 12 is also 1 third. Since I've got two sets of corresponding sides that are proportional, it's the same ratio, and I've got the included angles congruent, by side angle side similarity, I can say that these triangles are similar. Okay, one more on your own, okay? Um, I've got the included angle that is uh, shared by both of those triangles. What I need to test now are the corresponding sides. So the left side of the small triangle is nine. The left side of the big triangle is 13.5, okay? The left side of, the, or the right side of the little triangle is 10, and the right side of the big triangle is 15. What I need to do is determine if those are the same or not. So when I take 9 over 13.5, I get 0.6 repeating, or 2 thirds. Okay, just divided those on my calculator. 10 over 15 is also 2 thirds. And so, two sets of sides have uh, the same ratio. The included angles are congruent. So by side angle side similarity, I can say that the triangles are similar. Now, you notice there's two SASs. What's wrong with this one? They're saying AF comp uh, compares to AC. That's not true, right? AF corresponding to AC. They have the similarity statement incorrect on that one, okay? Um, so, if RST and XYZ are two triangles such that RS over XY corresponding parts is two thirds, which of the following would be sufficient to prove that the triangles are similar? Okay, so if I told you that RT over XZ was equal to ST over YZ, those are certainly corresponding parts and that would be enough, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, RS over XY, RT over XZ, and ST over YZ. I think that would be okay too. Um, angle R congruent to angle S. That's two angles within the same triangle. I'm not sure that that's terribly helpful. Um, RS over ST. Again, I'm comparing two sides of one triangle, the same triangle, that's not terribly helpful. So we kind of have to differentiate between A and B, which one is going to be the one that's correct, okay? Um, so, you know that these two sides are proportional with the scale factor of two-thirds. Check each answer choice until, so we're going through the, the possibilities. A, um, RT over XZ equals ST over YZ, then you know that the other two sides are proportional. 
You do not, however, and this was my mistake on the first one, know that that ratio is two thirds. If that was three fourths or something, then they're all three not in the same ratio. So I have to eliminate A, which, um, which means B is gonna be okay, all right? We've already talked about why C and D wouldn't work. All right, so given uh, two triangles, which of the following would be sufficient information to prove the triangles are similar? Okay, so AC over DC is four thirds. Well, that's saying that one set of sides is, is proportional, not good enough, okay? A measure of angle A is two times the measure of angle D. Well, honestly, the corresponding angles have to be congruent, so that's definitely wrong. AC over DC and BC over EC are congruent. So they're saying that's proportional to that and that's proportional to that. So I've got two sets of sides proportional and Without having to say it, I know that those vertical angles are congruent, so that would allow me to say side angle side. And giving me one set of corresponding sides in a ratio isn't enough. I think C is my answer for this one. Okay, this is just a recap, you guys, of those properties of similarity that we talked about. Reflexive, a triangle is congruent to itself. Symmetric, if ABC is similar to DEF, then DEF is similar to ABC, and then the transitive property. Okay, so that being said, Given a couple parallel lines, I tell you RS is four and RQ is X plus three, et cetera, they're all marked into the diagram. They want me to find RQ and QT. Okay, what I first of all need to determine before I can set up any proportions is if these triangles are similar. So the fact that these are parallel lines, and we did this earlier, the alternate interior angles have to be congruent. So U is congruent to S and T is congruent to R. So yes, the triangles are similar, and I can write a similarity statement about this. So I can say triangle um, TUQ is similar to, well, angle T is congruent to R, alternate interior, U is congruent to S, and Q is congruent to Q. So that would be a similarity statement that would work. Then knowing that, the corresponding sides have to be in proportion, so I'm gonna solve some some uh, proportions here, you guys. So 10 over four, that's the left sides. That's gonna have to equal um, 2x plus 10 over x plus three. And then I just have to solve it. And you'll see that in the next couple slides, okay? So cross multiply, make sure that you distribute so you put parentheses around it, okay? Subtract an eight x or a 10 x, however they do it divided by two, x is five. And so if I really wanted to find the lengths of the sides, I could plug those back in, okay? So I'm gonna put the five back in there and get eight, and then I'll put the five back in there and get 20, and I'm good to go. Okay, so pause your video, give this a shot. Okay, so again, parallel uh, lines, so alternate interior angles are congruent. I know that I've got similar figures, and so I can say that 38, 0.5 over 11, those are corresponding parts, is going to be 3x plus 8 over x plus 2, okay? So then we're going to cross multiply. If I distribute the 11 over here, I'm going to get 33x plus 88. And if I distribute the 38.5 here, I get 38.5x plus 77. Is that right? And so then I need to get all the x's on the same side. So I'm going to move this over, subtract the 33x, and I'm going to get 5.5x. I'm going to subtract the 77 over, and I'm going to get 11. And so then I have to divide by 5.5, and I'm going to get 2. Okay? Knowing that x equals 2 is a good start, but they want me to find ac. So ac is this 3x plus 8 here. I'm gonna put the two back into there. Three times two is six plus eight. I should get 14 if I did my math right. Okay, so if you got 14, give yourself a pat on the back. All right, Josh wanted to measure the height of the Sears Tower in Chicago. He used a 12 foot light pole and measured its shadow at 1 p.m. The length of the shadow was two feet. Okay, so we can build a triangle out of this, you guys. Then he measured the length of the Sears Tower shadow and it was 242 feet at the same time, which is important because the angle coming from the sun is the same then. What is the height of the Sears Tower? 
My suggestion to you is to draw a diagram for this one to begin with. Draw out that scenario, okay? So here's, here's the light pole and the shadow that goes with it. Here's the Sears tower and the shadow that goes with it. And these are similar triangles because you, you have to assume the light, pole, the light pole and the Sears tower are built at a right angle with the ground. Okay, if, if the engineers were any good at all, they would do that. And then the, because we took the shadow at 1 p.m., the angle that the light is coming down at is the same as well. So by angle, angle, these are similar triangles. Knowing that, I just have to set up a proportion, you guys. Okay? I could go bottom over bottom, 2 over 242 equals 12 over x, or any combination of that. We talked about some equivalent properties that would work there. And so once I have the diagram, I'm going to set up that proportion and solve. Okay? Now I'll, all I have to do is cross multiply, divide by 2. And so the Sears Tower, based upon those approximations, is 1,452 feet tall. Okay. All right, so pause the video and give this a shot. I'm going to have a real similar situation here. This is um, Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and the, and the lighthouse that goes with it. Um, you've got the height of a person and the shadow that was cast, and then we're trying to find the height of this tower. Okay. So. I can do this. So the bottom side of this triangle is one and a half feet. And the distance, or the length of the shadow for the light is 53 and a half feet. Okay. The height of the person, five and a half feet. The height of the lighthouse, we don't know. So I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to take 53.5 times. 5.5, I'm going to get 294.25, and that's going to equal 1.5x. So then I have to divide by 1.5, and I should get about 196 feet tall for the lighthouse. Okay, so just setting up proportions. Word problems sometimes are things that scare us a little bit, but you guys can all set up that proportion and solve. Okay. This is a recap of the theorems that we have to prove that triangles are similar. Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. We went through some examples for that. There's your assignments, you guys. So um, give that a shot and good luck.